I'm back here at, well, I'm not back here. I you're back, back here. I am it's, back here. This is the second time. But You're back in black. We're back <laughs> in the saddle again. Back with a new batch. Those are all songs. Look them up. Yes, please. And pause the video now. No. And um, welcome back. Welcome back. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a couple of weeks. We've had a couple of weeks to play around with our devices. I have been using the G7 as a daily driver. Juan's been using the P20 Pro as a daily driver. And uh, I want to kind of bring in a culmination of that experience with you guys. And uh, as you saw with the intro, we were at the park. We got a chance to play around at the zoo. We saw, we took some pictures. That was the initial thing. Then we've had some time to play with it. So that, to really get the feeling of how this device will perform um, and does it live up to our expectations or does it basically just want us to jump back to our old phone right away? So I figured why not sit down with, with Juan here and we'll get a chance to talk about some of the main points. Uh, keeping in mind that the, these devices are obviously very complex. We're not talking on every single piece of this, you know, the color, the, the, the color, the icon, the shape of the icon. We're talking about the parts that really matter the most to us and what makes us decide, do I want to buy this phone or do I want to buy that phone? So first and foremost, I'm going to start off and just obviously say this. Did, okay. it, did it blow your mind? Did it, did it do what I thought it was going to do? <laughs> and, and just basically say, I am P20 Pro all the way. Okay. So that that's that's a very tall order because I mean we've been around for a while. Yeah. So it, it it's it takes a lot to blow a mind. Okay. Right? Okay. So I'm just I'm to okay. be fair. To be fair, why we'll bring expectations, the expectations like right and also okay. expectations are also super high. Yeah. Right? So it wasn't like this phone came out of nowhere like a P9. Exactly. You know, P9 came out of it like rocked my socks because I had zero expectation of a Huawei performing as well as it really did. And like, yeah. oh, this like a branding <laughs> exercise. Brr. Well, now expectations are much, much higher. So this phone gives off a phenomenal first impression. Yeah. Like it's it is jaw dropping from it literally. And I, and I posted it on, on my Patreon. Literally the very first time I pushed the shutter button was a photo I had to go and share on my paid platform. So that that was very exciting yeah. to experience that. The that first impression I don't feel survives once you start getting into other aspects of the photography, especially the video capture yeah. on the phone. Yeah. And then some other things too we're going to talk about, some of the other just lifestyle features. We expect our phones to do so much. Obviously no one phone can do everything perfect. Exactly. But there are a few elements where I kind of had that qua moment <laughs> holding the P20 going, "Really? You drew a line in the sand there." Yeah. yeah. So so Ultimately, the P20 Pro survives. I mean, if the TLDR for the whole rest of our conversation here, the P20 survives as um, as an excellent example of a premium, high-end, high-performance, photography-focused device. Yeah. That is very satisfying. I don't know that it's enough to pull me away from the G7. So I have a similar experience with mm -hmm. the G7. I... So I, as we said before, I've had some experience holding on and using the device. I didn't use it more than a couple of days or so. And um, so again, I have to believe that the first time you, you threw a photo from the G7, you were probably a little disappointed. Initially, grabbing it first. Yeah. I mean, so there's a couple of things in the camera, too, that we've seen in the G7 that hasn't mm -hmm. been done before. So the AI is a new mode that's built in that we. Right. But I think Huawei actually does that better. True. But yeah. I'm, I'm referring mostly to the, like the G7 line of devices. So oh, when, the when G you, series. Yeah, like when, when you're looking. Yeah. When right, you're looking right. at an LG, uh, AI is something new, something that, totally. you know, but Huawei's been throwing AI around like it's basically, you know, last <laughs> week's uh, left. Like it's going out of style. Well, yeah. And and but in reality, I have to I have to give it to them. Um their their tuning are very very much done in a in a way where I, I call them social media ready. Uh, their filters are set so that you can mm -hmm. take an image and seriously post it straight to Instagram, Twitter, and go through the compressions and go through the totally. the, you know, the 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 quality output that you get, but still get a decent image that yeah. you'd be proud of. And I think that's what they're focusing on. It, that's well, really that's Leica's approach. Totally. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly what they want. And having that on the G7 was something that was very nice. And I got to, got a chance okay. to experience that when I went to the beach. And I had, had to take some like sunset pictures and so on. And I didn't have to go into the, uh, to pro mode and just seriously turn on AI. It took a second for it to kick in. But once it kicked in, I got some stunning pictures. Right. And so those are the things you want to keep in mind. Uh, and do I... So the short answer is, do I did I fall in love with the G7? No. Did I appreciate it more? Yes. Yeah. 
I really, I, I really felt like that was going to end up yeah, being and, and, and kind it, of the walk away from our experience. Yeah, year, right? and, and it's things that I normally would not have gone out and even thought about it, right? So, I, like I said, I purchased the G7 Thank You, and I ended up selling it because of a, a little bit of a complication. But my initial intention was to try out and see what was so special about the G7, different than what we've had in the past years. Um, and it didn't disappoint me, but it brought some new things that I wasn't aware that, you know, with the pluses, sometimes comes some things yeah. that you have to accept. So uh, good that we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for showing. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, smash that bell icon. Right now, if you haven't done it yet. That. <laughs> but before you go, let's 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 catch up. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Let's actually chat. Right. So <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about, and maybe I'll open this up to you first since triple camera kind of wins over double camera. But anyways, um, let's talk camera. OK. Uh, and we'll talk photography and video, you know, vi videos and, and pictures respectfully. Right. Because you have to look at them separately. The P20 you have performs very differently in both, it's, both fields. It's disconcerting yes. how how different the performance is yeah. from photos to videos. No, the uh, the main takeaway, you, you fire up the camera and you start snapping some stills. And when you don't have a person in front of the camera, it's a very pleasant experience for exactly what you said. You, you've got images that you feel are pretty much Instagram ready with mm -hmm. that AI plugin kind of doing all of the thinking for you. Mm -hmm. The problem I, I have with that is the photo output can be really unpredictable. Sometimes, yeah. Um, well, I mean, just AI in general. This isn't unique to Huawei. Everyone's doing their AI plug-in and their AI Even photo Samsung, composition. Uh, th Everybody. Through the AI uh, term right. this year at the, the, the Note yeah. 9. And, yeah. and I don't feel like that's actually representative of someone who who appreciates a certain style. Okay. Um, like I like taking macro photos. I love taking black and whites and I like taking silhouettes. And mm -hmm. so I, I have kind of an exacting need for what it is that I'm trying to accomplish when I like point my camera at something. And AI features in general and Huawei specifically, the thing that bothers me the most about their implementation now, as opposed to where I was with the Mate 10, where I didn't feel it was this pervasive, mm -hmm. is that they will actually switch modes on you. Yes. Where you will move from a normal, like super saturated unicorn barf HDR to maybe more of like a greenery mode or something like that to a full on depth of field blur mode. Depending if it sees somebody in front of you the or, second of or it focuses from, on the grass as opposed to the sky. I, and I, I, yeah. I have a hard time with that because, again, part of the reason why I would want to offer this to someone is to say like, oh, well, it's going to take some of the burden off of you needing to learn everything about your manual mode. But then you go and take a photo of your wife in front of a landmark. And suddenly you're in bokeh mode. And suddenly you're in bokeh mode. And you're like, well, that was supposed to be a vacation photo where I could see the Eiffel Tower in the background. And I wasn't, you know, you're in the moment. You shouldn't have to manage the phone and fight the feature that's supposed to be helping you. Yeah in the moment that you're trying to capture that photo. And so that to me, that kind of handholding for a lot of people, not for most, I think yeah. most people will be well served by this, but for a lot of people, that's actually going to serve as an impediment. That's actually going to be something that you have to work against. Yes. And as another recommendation where I have for people, as soon as you start looking at the things you want to accomplish mm -hmm. beyond just, I pushed shutter button, give me unicorn barf saturation, pixel, um, as, as soon as you move beyond that and you have things that you want to do, you have a vision in mind for what the final output's going to be, mm -hmm. go to manual mode and shoot full auto manual say, mode. Yeah, or disable because, master AI and, and go full on manual. Well, even, right. in, even without master AI, there is some of that manipulation of the JPEG processing that can change depending on the situation. And there's, that's, there's still some editing in the background, by the way. Exactly. Even yeah. when you disable it, uh, it there, especially with the front facing camera. It's still tweaking something, right? And yeah, this yeah. is something that we've been dealing with since the days of point and shoot cameras, right? Yeah, yeah. You sell a camera to a consumer and for some reason we think that means give me the most obnoxious training wheels you can. As opposed to like, give me just a simple tool that can accomplish what it is that I have to do in that moment. Exactly. I, mean, I think I think that's just like different engineers work at that from different perspectives. And right now, I think Huawei is a little too aggressive in the handholding that they're doing. So when you shoot full manual, you have the raw as a backup. So yep. if you make a mistake you or if you back. overexpose or something like that, you can you can recover. You can save that photo. And especially with the dynamic range mm -hmm. on this camera, you've got a lot of room to play with. Exactly. Um, and then you know, most of the time that JPEG is going to be sort of the most even handed processing that Leica promotes. Leica really likes contrasty, edgy, over sharpened photos. Photo. So you just know that going into it. But 
most of the time that does look pretty good. I think it's if you, it looks if terrible you're, if you're a pixel peeper. Exactly. But so, don't be a pixel peeper. And you know who you are. It's Kyle. bad for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's bad for everybody. And I, I so the way I've looked at it. Initially, when I first got the phone, um, I was in Paris, and I, of course, it's just the city—you just want to take pictures. City of, all of lights, exactly. Right. And 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 I went out at night. Eiffel Tower. All those pictures were like, wow. Yeah. Out of the box, and and you're right. Once you put a subject, it does change a little bit the exposure, the focusing, the uh, mm -hmm. the AI or the master AI start kicking in. And I've learned to kind of use the camera in a better way. So when I, when I am taking a picture of my wife, I automatically disable bokeh mode or turn yeah. off master AI. So I can actually get that focus, both foreground and background and not get that whole bokeh effect well, unless and, I want and it. And you do have some serious concerns when you move up the image sensor because yeah. when this phone blurs the background, Naturally, I was gonna say, yeah. It re I mean, the the depth of field on this is is very similar to what we used to have on the 1020 on the Lumia. It's and and it is it is a, a a noticeable step different from. I mean, like a third inch camera sensor on the G7. You've got a really long it's depth it, of field. You've got a really long field of, of focus. So that that does become a concern where you can wreck the location. That you're shooting in it if has you're too it, close. you have to have you have to think about the shot you have to set it up correctly and i think if you keep that in mind the phone i feel like the the p20 pro will perform very well yeah um the way i've seen it on my side with a nice little segue into the g7 side uh the g7 has a very different approach to it as 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 you guys know um it has two different two different cameras on the back you have a wide angle and a regular standard angle uh, shot so you're able to do a very different type of photography, either fit everything under the sun or focus on your subject. And you're able to basically switch between the two um, in basically depending on the scene that you're in. I mm -hmm. enjoyed having that. Um, it's what, way more flexible. It's a lot more flexible. But what I found that when when we go into wide angle chart, it does it in a... It, it doesn't keep the same aspect as when you're going in from the focus shot because it's trying to give you a wide angle. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is I, I try taking pictures between those two and I appreciate it in certain scenery and there's a lot to put in. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to fit somebody, let's say that, um, the, the, the example I would use is I, we were at the Hotel del Coronado Beach and I was trying to take a picture of the hotel and I was close up to it. And, um, and I'll try to overlay this on top of here when we're talking. <laughs> and then I did a wide shot and it fits so much that I lost the subject. So that to me, you kind of need to learn. Well, I mean, learning that, what to use and yeah. what which camera to use. And that's what I'm trying to say is where you have it with the P20 Pro, when you're switching, you're using the secondary lens or the third lens in this point to be able to get more detail or more depth. Right. Um, with the uh, with the G7, you really have kind of two different cameras, two different yeah. setups, and you can't easily rely on both at the same time. You have to use one or the other, but it's great to have. Right. It's confusing the way I'm explaining it, but the short answer. Well, I, I, I love the seamlessness that we had in here, as opposed to as a point and shoot. When I'm taking a picture, I wanna, I have to think of it a little bit more. Do I want to take a picture as basically fitting everything? Do I want to get right. the ceiling, the ground, everybody, and you know the guy standing next to me, mm -hmm. or do I want to focus? And I found it that using the main camera as opposed to going directly to the wide angle lens, I got better shots. The AI, well, the built-in AI mode that they have now. Also, did actually a pretty decent uh, okay. exposure. It's a little bit slow. Oh, it's really slow. And and uh, it's really it's slow a, for having a Qualcomm A forty five. So yeah, when when the and the shot that I'll show you guys right here, that the little uh, the night shot that I did, or the sunset shot, um, it took me about like twenty seconds or so for it to kind of get that right shot, get the focus back up and running, and then you know obviously to be able to set the thing. And sorry for that mic thing, uh, but to get the setup correctly for me, where I felt like if I had the P twenty Pro, I would have a shot would have been done twenty seconds ago. That was my my thought. If mm -hmm. I had the master AI, because there's not that much of uh, an issue there, I realized, and it hit me when I was in Paris, um, I'd be trying to take a picture, right? And there's like a green grass and then blue sky. And if I slightly go down, green grass mode turns on, slightly yeah. up, blue, blue sky, sky mode, mode turns on. Right. And the grass becomes very underexposed or, and then sky is like super blue. And right. I'm like, so um, I love the fact that I can point at you to take a picture right out of the box, right out of, you know, just turn it on, mm -hmm. take a picture. With the G7, I felt like it's a little bit more work. So between the two, I would still, in my mind, even though I have the wide angle option, I would I would still prefer the P20 Pro right. for photography. So so I, I, the, the only time I think where I really felt like I had an advantage, like a substantial advantage over the G7 was getting into really high contrast, low light, situations yeah where that extra sense of real estate its ability to soak up light um that really plays a strong advantage because the g7 does start to fall apart in dark 
It when you can, yeah. Not indoor, but dark. Dark. It's um, light. and they have this problem where they like to overprocess uh, noise, mm -hmm. and so you get this weird modeled pattern grain. Which, if you just left it regular, sort of high ISO grain, it would have looked fine, somewhat decent. Yeah. But you tried to blur the grain and then sharpen it, and then that just brings back all of the grain in the worst possible way. So there, there are some issues there on the G7. But it, it, it's interesting because like so much of what I'm used to in terms of composition, mm -hmm. um, manual mode to manual mode, I actually think that LG has managed to evolve into a much cleaner way oh, definitely. to control that setup. And that's actually another one of the things that bothered me going, so through this whole progression from the P9 to the P20, mm -hmm. um, with the P10 in the middle and the mates and, and all the other Huawei's is that I feel like every successive generation of Huawei camera app mm -hmm. has gotten fiddlier. So, you know, I really liked the swipe panels. There was yep. a lot that you had to put into a Huawei camera app, but you swiped from one direction, you got modes, you swiped from the other direction, direction, you got yeah, settings. Awesome. Exactly. And now you've got to slide through an iPhone-like interface to get to a more menu, which then gets you into your so modes. additional and, modes. And so- And pro mode and uh, some of the other the so ones things, that you'd want to get to are in there, you're th right. Things like, again, if I'm going to say just phone to phone, out of the box, out of the box, the AI mode on the Huawei, is better than the AI mode on the G7, but that to me isn't really a huge selling point because I think AI modes will almost as often as not get in your way. Exactly. So then if I'm trying to get out of those types of options, those types of settings, or if I just want to simplify some of that, then the Huawei becomes even fiddlier yeah, you'd to have use. To, it's too and much. You, you have to spend even more because I've always you know I've always said this like a, a Huawei phone. If anyone's reviewing it the the week it came out, mm -hmm. you see a review for a Huawei and they mention, oh, the camera is so hard to use. And it's like, well, yeah, you actually need to spend some time to learn getting all, your way where around. Everything is exactly. But they keep making that more complicated, not less. Because it changes so often. Exactly. Right. And now LG has actually refined this to a point where from the G4 to the G7, this is a really a really photo focused, clean, straightforward they, camera. App. They're learning a lot more. Also, they're bringing some of the V side over. And oh this. yeah, I mean, so this, that's the other thing. This yeah, is really trying G to be a baby V. Yeah, definitely. exactly. So th that's the other other thing. The refinement of where the G side, the G series, has basically gone through. It's not really the same. Like, when you said the G4, yeah, this is very different than what you had on the G4. When you went it's from really the G4, not that different though. Like if you were the, to if you were to pick up the, G4, the audio quality, the the G4. So the, where I'm comparing it is. But pro photo, to mode to five. pro photo mode, even with the G5, pro photo mode to pro photo mode, the G7 has now just gone longer and the interface is a little prettier, but the actual layout and UI isn't radically dissimilar. It's not like where you went like, you know, Galaxy Note 4 to like a Galaxy Note uh, 8. Oh, wait, yeah. Would be a, a radically different interface for you where to, touch to kind became of play with. Sense. Yeah, exactly. Or, right. But it's just, for me, I've appreciated the G series more starting with the G7. Mm -hmm. uh, the G6 was a great device. The G5 was an interesting uh, concept, but uh, around interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, but I've always been a big fan of the V series. I've always been yeah. the, the, the V10, the 20, the 30. Those are the, the those are the devices I've always looked at at the end of the year because I felt like they take everything that the G series tries to do, just go super pro mode everything. Yeah. You got the better chipset. You always got the more RAM. You always had uh, better DAC. Uh, I mean, obviously now we have wireless charging, all of those things. So mm -hmm. short answer, photography wise for you, P20 Pro, yay or nay? Maybe, or is it um, in the middle? So just regarding just, the G7, just, yeah, yeah, if, if just photos, yeah, it's an obvious win. Okay. Just photos. And for me, but it's the same, it's, it's the same qualifier that I've had to put on Huawei phones before where you need to spend the time to learn, to how learn how to use it. It's not. I don't really think it's it's the the, the best like point and shoot experience that you can by, have. By no means that does that. Yeah. yeah, and I wasn't trying to insinuate that. What I meant to say is, oh, I got um, you loud and clear, TK <laughs> Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I read you like a <laughs> like a dime store paperback. I said it on the first video. I'm going to say it again. It, it, <laughs> so the best way I explain it, like I said, it's it's nighttime photography for me has always been a challenge on many devices, even Pixel devices, and. That that few days that I was in Paris when I when I first got my hands on this device and taking shots at night, the Eiffel Tower, uh, the Louvre, or, or any of all, mm -hmm. any of the just places like, places that you normally would go and you would take your phone with you, which is more than likely what's going to be in your pocket, and you want to get really good shots. So that's why I was pitching, and that's one of the reasons oh, yeah. I fell in love and, with and it. And that's that's where it absolutely. And whenever succeeds. I travel, as you mentioned before, traveling always 
puts me at night somewhere where mm-hmm. I'm in a place in a city and I want to take shots at night. Um, and it does well for me. So for me, between the two, if I had to pick one of the two and I had both sitting on my desk, okay. I would always go for the P20 Pro for pictures now. with the understanding that it's not as simple as right. out so, and this And this is where like the P20, if we're just talking about the P20, I, th- I think it's it's a great camera. But if I'm choosing between the two, yeah. I'm going to go back to the G7 because you have a better zoom range. Yes. So, you know, you were saying it's like it's like having two different cameras and you're you're right. You know, it's they're two separate cameras. There's Have a you wide tried angle using camera the, the 40 and, megapixel uh, sensor on its own. Uh yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's great, the, but but the 40 megapixel sensor all on its own doesn't get me a wide shot when I want a wide shot. No, it just gets It you doesn't really get me zoom. an action camera shot when I want an action camera yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. And the zoom is better. Yeah. But it's still not so much better that I feel like the G7 is overly compromised there. And that's actually one of the things that the glass lens element on the main camera sensor does really well Mm -hmm. on the G7 is it's pretty clear glass. I mean, you can, you can force that crop zoom to get you some, some pretty decent. I was surprised with the level of zoom. So there are also those things where, because I mean, you've, your, your, your child is slightly older than mine, but that wide angle for Lex has been a godsend since yeah. since the p uh, since the v20 mm-hmm. um the only way i was able to capture her first steps was because she was walking way too close to me if i had been on any phone it would have been like a head and shoulder shot and i flip it over into the wide angle and i've got the Everything. whole living room right next to her and i'm in the moment better and so that's so, that's to the point i'm saying it's it, you have to understand that this phone has two different cameras right. so Making it a very well, unique I mean, it's, experience. It's, it's like having a really great zoom lens on a on a nice camera. You, know, you can I, look I, at it that way too. It's, I, I want to, but it's but I, I want to. It's because so many people or so many companies produce similar cameras. That that's a, a unique. It's a unique yeah. thing that you have to look at, and it, it not necessarily as a bad thing, but just understanding that because you have two two lenses, you are gonna get two different point of views. So you can't just mm-hmm. pop it into the wide angle and then expect it to give you the same kind of shot as your standard lens. Well, but that's that's why I mean is like it's you, a, it's you a would plus. put a, you would put an, an ultra an ultra zoom lens on a on a DSLR, like something that could shoot, you know, like super wide mid-range angle and then give you some some mid range zoom too, and you would understand like, oh if well, I'm super zoomed out. Yeah. This I'm going to lose my subject if exactly. they're by yeah, a giant you, building. It's, everything it's, in, yeah, there's too many it's, things going on. It's the same on. philosophy as that. And so that to me is a bigger benefit for travel. Yeah. Is when I'm in a bunch of different locations, some of the low light shots might get a little gross and grainy, mm-hmm. but I can actually capture a field of view, view that is wholly unique to LG. Um, I think there's one other manufacturer. There's that one does more, that. but I think they're the most noting. No, they're, but also, I mean, in terms of overall quality and stuff too, it, LG is the top dog in that. Yes, yeah, especially a, like in Rome, Italy, competitor. when you're when you're looking at places where they're kind of a little bit cramped, and you mm-hmm. want to be able to fit more of your your actual scene. Uh, I think the G7 does really well. I appreciate both devices. That's it. it always comes down to the point. No, I appreciate G7. Them. It's a total winner. That's all there is. Dang it, that's all there is. No. Um, well, speaking of that, let's let's it, talk video our, though. But but that that's the last thing to kind of wrap up with. Yeah, is yeah. This is this is a more artistic photographic tool for. It, it's like a medium format camera with mm-hmm. a fixed lens. Um, it's a more artistic tool for a certain type of composition. Mm-hmm. The G7 is the better all rounder, more flexible platform oh. IMO because of its ability to fit into so many more scenarios That's true. where straight one-to-one main camera lens photography, it's going to lose. But if I'm in a medium distance shot, the depth of field off of the G7 is surprisingly decent. I can flip wide and mm-hmm. capture a different, a different point of view or a different field of view. And then that brings us to video where yeah. the G7 is a clear victor. It's a clear yeah. winner for me. Stabilization and is, quality and very is highlighting some serious disappointment that I have in the P20 after using the Mate 10 Pro for so long. Yeah. That there is some kind of hardware stabilization on these lenses. Mm-hmm. I think that I've seen some articles talking about, the, I think it was at the disassembly that well, they was able to find it. And then also it. you can see in the viewfinder, and I don't believe it's a software crop, that when you go to zoom, the image gets smoother than when you're just hand holding it normally. It's something is happening. It, it almost looks like it's buffering. If you say so if you if you've gone to that zoom a little bit and you zoom in, you give it a second. It's a little bit shaky, and, and then suddenly and boom, boom, and it's 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 Clears, rock solid. Yeah, it, we don't get any content or output from those cameras utilizing 
what the viewfinder is giving us. Exactly, yeah. Which is horrifically disappointing. It's it's one of where, the things I've, I've been wishing for some of these software updates. And I've received updates to them. I mean, yeah. they just pushed out the GPU turbo option that right. they were talking about. Um, in it, There's definitely a lot of things they can do software-wise. And I'm not sure if we've seen the full potential of video on it. But in the meantime, the device has been out for what? Five months, six months now? We, I would and, hope to have seen yeah, something more than that. Yeah, should have been yeah. by now. I think they should have pushed something. And if nothing else, I'm not trying to bag on the P20 Pro. <laughs> I like the P20 Pro. But, but like this I is said, not I like, a video vlogger But I, I wouldn't, I would not use it, especially not with a front-facing camera. The dynamic range on the front-facing camera I believe is purely software driven because I've used an open camera with it mm -hmm. and I've gotten much better pictures from yeah. the front facing sensor because it's a high level sensor uh, just getting straight pictures. Because if yeah. there's any any amount of light behind you, like this exposure where you're looking at me right now, if I just switch this way and take a picture, there's a little bit of light behind me. You're the gone. Whole, yeah, the yeah. whole thing is it's just, it, it it's cannot wrecked. focus. It's trying so much to focus on me that it overblows everything behind me. It ends up basically being a, just, it doesn't look right. Well, so there are a couple things and going on. And this is where I like the G7. So and, that kind of won me over there. The, the G7 does this in a couple ways too. The The camera app's easier to use. Yeah. The manual modes actually affect video, where mm -hmm. the P20 seems to dance around exposure settings in a way that you can set something to try and compensate. And then the phone may or may not actually listen to the adjustment that you've made. Or if it does, it doesn't stay long enough on it. As in mid-video, in mid -video, you actually basically well, jumps. And that's another frustrating thing, too, where... This seems to be a thing with Chinese manufacturers. I have the same problem with OnePlus, where mm -hmm. you go to shoot video and you tap on the screen to focus. Yep. And then it resets the focus as if you were in the photo app and you just waited too long. Whereas every other phone, a Samsung, an LG, an HTC, an iPhone, you tap and it locks the focus and you're done. That's and it. that's it. Yep. Um, so this is also another one of those things. Um, it's the pain point in photography too. Our phone screens are great, mm -hmm. but they're not awesome for things like manual focus. And that's another awesome advantage that's that sweet. I really wish Huawei would pick on pick up on is focus peaking, where it gives you that green, hazy, edgy thing filter just to tell so you, you what, know what, what's yeah, in what, focus what's in focus exactly so those things all add up to more trust that not only am i, am I gonna land a shot but i'm going to land the yeah, shot i want the shot you're trying to shoot for and you can then add on top of that too the the video features are extremely formidable bitrate control yep. hdr video um image stabilization on the main camera lens uh you flip it over into the wide angle mm -hmm. and it's still i think it's still the best vlogging platform oh no that's just going like that and you don't even need to worry about where you're lining your shot up and it's you're like gonna... if you're like this you've got your shot and you're the field of view the state, yeah your camera it has a good field of view there yeah. where, where then also it, it it it's a bit of a pain because the wide angle isn't image stabilized but then you can run it through google photos the stabilization in that and it's it's awesome. That it's was a beautiful. really good tip, by the way. I did not. It's so, so good. So everybody, if you're not familiar Google with photos. this, the Google Photos app on your phone has stabilization, and it's it's it's, it's really good. It's really good. It's as good as most of the it's desktop ridiculous. video editors that I've used. Uh, and it actually processes. I mean, it takes a little bit depending on the quality of the image. If you're like 4K or whatever, but the fact of the matter is, it's on your phone. You can use it right out of the box. You just open it up after you're done shooting your main shot on your camera, and just hit that button. It'll come up right there on the edit. Stabilize. That's all and you need to done. do. So and you would so think, I, yeah. <laughs> so so here's here's what gets me back on the P20 Pro. So I haven't had a chance to use it. <laughs> oh no, no no here's here's something that's gonna be kind of shocking. Oh dang it! Are you ready, Huawei? We've got some things we need to work on. Got some explaining so to do. So if if I'm gonna recommend yeah Google Photo stabilization, then I should give the same consideration to the P20 Pro and its non-stabilized 4K video, that's right? That's true. No, it does stabilize at 1080. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, so the stabilization at 1080 yeah. is pretty good. If you're 1080p, don't, that you're fine. Don't it's shoot the 1080. Above 1080p stabilization. 4K looks way better. Just just do it. You can Why are you spending a thousand dollars on a phone that can shoot 4K video if you're not going to shoot 4K video? So then, obviously, you would want to run that through Google Photos and get that awesome stabilization too. So how's that experience? Doing my benchmarking. Okay. If I'm rendering a minute of UHD video shot from a high quality source, the Kirin 970 is just seconds behind a Qualcomm, Qualcomm 845. Right. Yeah. For whatever reason, if I stabilize a minute of video from a Kirin 970, it is slower than a Qualcomm 660. So when I ran my stabilization, because I ran it on my Snapdragon 845. Uh, on S9. an 845, it's it's almost always 
like one to one. So if it's a minute long video, it's going to take you a little bit longer than a minute yeah, to stabilize. Yeah, and that's that's how it was. On a, yeah. on a minute long, I took a, a, a sample of video mm -hmm. from this camera and from my G7. So I shot a wide angle shot from my G7. It was over two to one. So a minute of okay. video took almost two two minutes and 27 seconds. Yeah. Whereas a Qualcomm 660 took two minutes and 17 seconds to stabilize the exact same minute of video. So, that, so there that, is something that Huawei is deficient in in this Kirin 970 chipset, which is likely getting in the way of this type of software image processing and yeah. image stabilization. So GPU Turbo is likely something that could help with that. But you'd have to get it optimized on the, and, on the app level, which at, at this point is literally limited to maybe two or three. Like PUBG is one of them, uh, right. and, I, and I see the benefit. But once it works, it, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, again. Uh, so but, there is possibilities. But we're talking, this is... This is not a great video platform. If you shoot and video, I, and I agree with you when it when it comes to that, I would choose the G7 over the P20. Pro. Lastly, is also just the audio capture. Huawei's input is fine, but yeah. you do like you flip on video and you go into manual mode in a G7 and you can control the gain. You have a low cut filter if you want to get rid of the rumble of trucks driving by you. That's, you've got a yeah, those, you've those got are pro balancing. Level quality. Uh, so I mean, yeah. like on a G series, like this is something that we used to this, only get on the V. Yeah, I was exactly yeah, exactly what I was gonna say. This was very much a unique thing to the V. You always went to the V to get those quality, and the G series is getting it. So you really have to understand that the G7 is a leap. In, Hugely. In a huge leap from what you had from the G6, from the sense of what you can do just well, the, from the, the inter... The G6 had some had, had a lot of that, but it, it like the, this is two generations of LG. From the G5 to the G7 is like night and day. This yeah. is a baby V. The only thing that's exactly. lacking here is Cinelog, if you're doing a lot of yeah, color grading. Well, that's right. The and then yeah. also uh, the V30, not the V35, but the V30 can switch lenses while shooting video. I, you noticed, I noticed, yeah, you can't go between the two on in video. And I don't think you're gonna. Me. I also don't, don't think you can do it on the the V35 because it's more this it's camera module. Than, yeah, the V35 is pretty close to this. So, okay. um, it, it that's that's again, I put more trust in the G7 for a wider variety mm -hmm. of photo and video scenarios, though. In a handful of photo scenarios, the P20 is going to crush it. But I'd be willing to live with the compromise of those few scenarios where the P20 is head and shoulders, like objectively, no questions, superior um, to the G7. I'm OK taking the hit on that, knowing that in every other situation, I'm more likely to get something I want, more likely to get something I can use with controls that better fit into my workflow will match with my uh, uh, my standalone camera mirrorless camera, exactly, yeah. I can balance all that stuff out easier. And then it's just, I'm shooting so much more video these days, especially you 4K video. Exactly. All of those things just keep chipping away at what is obviously the superior hardware. And and for me, I uh, I do have to make sure to at least mention that I generally, whenever I do video with the P20 Pro, I do end up using a gimbal of some type of stabilization right. to compensate for the fact that, that we don't have it at higher levels. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if I had to choose between the two, um, which it's a, that, it's a tough decision for me. I, like I said, video, photo, video, photo. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna say. And this is the T7. This is the P20 Pro. I'm, I'm a little bit split. I mean, you can you can hold them. It's like we can you can. It's like prop comedy. We can so, like pick them up. Video, photo. photo. Video, photo. So that kind of sums up video, photo. And I know we can spend more hours oh, talking yeah. and digging into yeah, those. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk audio because that's another big thing that G7 has that is basically coming in. And we're going to look at them in two different parts mm -hmm. because you have to understand that there is the speaker portion, which also is a very unique thing, as well as the headphone. lack of a three and a half millimeter headphone, headphone anyway. portion, which so is that, also a very unique thing. So, digital to audio conversion. It is. It's a DAC. So, yeah. so it has a DAC built in and it's thick enough to, to have, have a DAC. A 3.5 millimeter phono jack. Exactly. And the adapter is not, the dongle is not a dedicated USB audio device. It's just a pass through to the audio processing hardware that's built in here. It's just that audio processing hardware is, is kind of garbage. It's so, really not good. To clarify, when I say it doesn't have a DAC, I meant a decent DAC. You know, a DAC you'd want to listen this, to music this on. Is, this is an ESS Saber DAC. I it's, mean, this is now going into high-end gaming hardware for it's, supreme fidelity, hardcore audio, and it handily competes against things like standalone music players. It, it is just um, absolutely Fios fantastic. and Echo Boxes and stuff like that. So it's let, it's talk, a monster. So with that caveat, let's talk 
specifically about speaker audio right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll focus on speaker audio. We'll talk about the headphones in a second. So, um, you know, I'll start with this one just a little mm -hmm. because I was initially blown with the boombox effect that the, this this device has. It's epic. And um, for a single firing speaker, bottom firing speaker, this does not have stereo. Uh, it has a specific effect that it basically emanates the sound through the back of the device as well as the bottom firing speaker to generate vibrations. And it really works best when you have it on a, on an open hollow surface. On hollow surface, so that it actually has a way of reverberating the sound and it actually sounds louder and better. And, and it fills out a lot of the low frequencies. Exactly, and it actually vibration. sounds a lot better. That was the other thing. When I put it down, I was but, like, wait, where did the second speaker come from? Or, and uh, even just putting it on a flat or on a table, oh, even yeah, if it's not hollow, it, it, you get some of that effect. It, but the second you put it on, if you have an empty wooden box. Yeah, like the, the box that comes with the phone. Exactly, oh. You just want to put it on. <laughs> um, so that's the, the difference between the two. They both perform well in different ways. Now, the P20 Pro does have stereo speakers. They're, they're reasonably loud. They perform well. Um, and you do have a much better experience using when you're holding it handheld. And if you're watching a video, you get that you know stereo sound. It's built into the device. Uh, where the G7, I feel like it's meant to be watched and used, and again, based on experience, when it's on a surface to get that better sound. So that was my mm -hmm. um, kind of like, I like, but I kind of like wish there was another way. And the reason behind I that is, um, so when you're, when you're using it in handheld mode, I felt like that vibration, the additional vibration in the back still always ran. So you yeah. always have the back, you have you feel like a little bit of vibration. So if you're holding it in your hand, you always deal with this little bit of a vibration. Initially, it doesn't bug, but when you're watching a 30, 30, 60 minute video and there's a lot of sound, you kind of like, okay, can is there a way of turning that off? So that... And there isn't. It's, there isn't. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's always based on. on a chamber it's in the phone. It's it, not it, like it, it's a vibrating pad that and, you can And it's a with. great... So for me... See, I kind of miss it from when I was gaming though. Because I don't play game audio very loud if I'm around my wife and Lex. No, no, and so, but so the, you still get a tactile sensation of oh, boss fight's coming up because I can feel it you coming feel from the phone. the phone. So I, I kind of you don't missed... have an on and off option for it. No, it, was... it would be no. I totally agree with you. That it would, would be my nice thing. to have yeah. a disable feature on that. I was like, you you did a great job getting that feature. You did well, and then. But now there's need... something I miss because you know every phone vibrates a little. Yeah. That now that I've gone to another phone for a while. There was a there was this really funky um, manufacturer, Low Felt or Blow Felt or something like that, and they made um, a subwoofer that was a oh, vibrating pad. I remember that one. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, CES yeah, yeah, like yeah, two yeah, years yeah. ago. And as soon as you stopped wearing it, you, you yeah. felt like something was missing. Yeah, well, you, had you felt the, like there was a vibration the, 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 missing. The shadow, the shadow. Yeah, because it was like this. It was like you were standing in front of a subwoofer on your arm, mm -hmm. and. You that felt that's it. a that's a tactile experience that happens with low frequency sound, which can be very satisfying. Um, so now on the P20, I do believe in middle volume sort of ranges that the separation because it's not really stereo. It's not left right. It's higher frequency See, out of the exactly. earpiece and, and lower the low, frequency out it's, of the, it's, the bottom. Uh, it's, it's like HTC. Yeah, I was gonna say it's the HTC's approach, and it's many other devices that have gone now expanded because to that. they don't want to over they don't want to blow the headpiece. Well. That's another frustrating thing about the P20 is when you turn it into landscape, the stereo plus mode will try and make it more of a stereo, stereo setup and, and it, you have it to doesn't disable work when you're, that yeah, when you're in portraits. And that's... then you just get high frequency, low frequency, even when you're in. And I think because the phone, you don't really have much stereo separation. You're too, it's, it's not too close, close enough for it to, yeah, I was going to say, it's not close enough for you to be like, oh, this came from the left. But but I still, I, I found myself actually missing something that- Vibration. I, Without when I when I had it, I would have agreed with you. Oh, this is actually kind of annoying when I'm holding this for too long. Now it's like, but but I want that sensation back now that I don't have it. And I don't have anything and against. Like I said, it works for what it does, but I feel like a, an on and off option. Right. Mostly because, like you said, exactly for for gaming, that would have been a perfect example. Mm -hmm. uh, you do want that, and you want to be able to basically play with it. But for me, when I play on on devices for gaming purposes. I generally connect the three, uh, like a Bluetooth controller into it and I put a headset on. So I'm not holding my device right. and my phone is sitting on a, either on the mount for my gaming controller and I want to get into that and I want to basically be so involved into this. Uh, and it, that's where obviously a three and a half millimeter headphone jack would be <laughs> nice. <laughs> but anyway, nice. the short answer is for me, it's never really handheld. So when I have it in, in media consumption, watching YouTube videos, when I'm watching videos and so on, after 30 minutes, after 60 minutes, it kind of becomes like, is mm -hmm. there a way to turn it off? So that would be my only gripe about it. It's great for if you ever have an experience where you, you're in a group and you want to share your music, turn well, it and, on, and put it on that, a table like we, and just... 
we we gave up on Bluetooth speakers with Lex. No, no exactly. Because like this does know, the exact we just, same. We, job. Want, we want to play the the kids Spotify mix, and I just set it. There's this little ledge under our TV. Yeah, it's a glass ledge. Oh, and it's wow, got this perfect. great like like ring mod yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of snappy <laughs> bouncy thing. kind of that, you put that on top of it and all of her little like uh, nursery rhyme stuff and her Disney songs like have this really kind of electric yeah. bounce to them that sounds awesome it just sounds so so cool um and so we I, we had to bring the bluetooth speaker back out of retirement <laughs> because <laughs> I'm the because i've had this for the last couple of weeks so. our, our, my g7 Sorry, so uh, uh, my apologies to the uh, young no man. no no it's quite fine um so again it that that's one of those things where there's an there is a compromise yeah. there is a compromise on having a tactile experience which might bother some people but more often than not, I can live with that compromise for all of the times where I really do value having that more tactile experience. I, it's just, I think it would be way too complicated to have in a phone that kind of low felt style vibrating pad because mm -hmm. it was like having a subwoofer. It wasn't just like the taptic engine on an iPhone. It was this really nuanced vibrating membrane yeah. um, that would just overcomplicate the phone. So their solution is really ingenious and in just building oh. a big empty chamber to help vibrate air inside the phone, which then resonates outside the phone. Um, so you can't really turn, turn that, off. that off. No, no, I, I agree. So. Like I said, the, the 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 approach is ingenious, unique. Again, LG does this. I mean, they have it's, a lot of unique things in there. Yeah. Um, it just, for me, like I said, the understanding that we can't turn it off would have wished an on and off switch would have been there but overall i think from an from media consumption though uh, but then you, you know, plug the, in the headphones and it's a non-issue because so that takes less less segue the doors to that. off that's a beautiful any... segue to the next thing <laughs> um and i and i also want to throw a caveat at the beginning of this conversation uh before we talk too much headphones is i generally use a um and you you may obviously have heard of it but um the razor phone came, when the razor phone first came out uh, it had an accessory that came with it, and that was a beautiful. Uh, was it, is it 32 bit or 24 bit? 24 bit. It's a 24 bit DAC that had one amazing feature. It worked on anything, mm -hmm. any device. You plug it into your PC. You plug it into your Pixel device. It was a it, proper USB audio input it, output and it's device. Amazing. I have. I swear by it. So my experience of enjoying media on the P20 Pro with headphones. Mm -hmm has always been using that DAC. Now, I did not share that with uh, with one because I didn't no, no, no. feel you like gave, it was you part gave of me the P20 out I, of the box. Yeah, the, the, and, but the, I gave the, you the DAC that came with the, the little the uh, dongle, pass -through, the pass-through and, dongle. And the earbuds. Yes, so, so those those are things that came with it because I wanted him to experience it as if he purchased I it. I bought the phone. Yeah. Right. So uh, Huawei is making a claim as to the, the presentation of their phone yeah. with the features on their phone. And for as expensive as this phone is, if you like your ears and you've got nice headphones, Huawei's solution is insufficient. It is, I, I it think is not okay that a phone this expensive is this bad out of the box. And it's so incomplete that you need to fill in the uh, gaps in by the buying gap. nice Bluetooth headphones or, or, even or dongles and adapters, USB DACs, things like that, that can fill in what is obviously lacking from this for the, for the price point and i agree with you on the price point I, because I think it's, it's going up against a phone which costs 200 dollars less uh, so sort of accounting for well, exchange rates and stuff well actually keep in mind so current market prices um they're actually not that far from each other oh did the p20 come down yes because at launch price it was it was like around a, yeah it's like 150 euro was uh, the difference thousand, yeah it's down to like 768 now Oh, the P20 Pro is okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a little so bit better. Current market price, yes, but, we, but what we're referencing essentially is literally this because came out five months ago. And, and in some markets, like the G7 and the OnePlus Six are going head to head that's in true. terms of price, depending but, on where, which market. But, but but again, it's performance wise, you, yeah, night and day. You don't have to make up any extra costs. You have to spend more to come close. Yeah, way more to the G7. Yeah, way, way more, uh, mind you. You have to keep. And it's hard to explain it because had we had this conversation at the beginning of this uh, exchange, I wouldn't have explained it as in this way. I wouldn't have been able to experience it and say, right. well, no, this, I don't think it's that great. Juan, what are you talking about? No, it, it truly is. It's like a, a very big gap in performance jump. And this literally, regardless if you have even high-end cans or even like high impedance headphones, any headphone you plug into this will sound great. Yeah. Any. It and could cheap, the, it could be crap. It will sound better than if you use the adapter on the on the P20 Pro. And I'm not trying to put the P20 Pro down. It's just truly performance between the two. It 
it really makes me, it's the same reason why I love the V, the v series mm -hmm. of devices. It's always had that built in and I knew what I was getting with it. When I bought a V20 or a V30, I knew what I was getting and I yep. was getting it out of the box. I don't have to worry about it. Plug in my headphone and just listen, enjoy the music and, and make sure you get some really good like sound isolation headphones so you don't get any kind of sound bleeding from the outside <laughs> right. and just sit there and enjoy the music. Uh, and and you'll hear things in your music that you wouldn't yeah, have heard and, and, on and, any And I'm not even phone, talking about so. like high end. We're not talking like right. flack type of quality audio. I'm talking YouTube. I'm talking uh, <laughs> playing regular audio, I was say, running even, it. Even your MP3s. Even your MP3s will sound so, way better. So the, the, the big problem moving into this is it's a, a louder noise floor paired with a substantially lower signal to noise ratio. So it's the worst combination it's just, for, for listening to compressed music. It's, like you're saying, which not, is most, not even looking yeah, at no, like flat because we're not even talking like about uncompressed audio. Here. We're talking about normal audio that you're listening to, streaming, Spotify, uh, Pandora, all of that stuff, or, just or your, even local MP3s. You know, your old MP3s from Kazaa. <laughs> can can, I really hope can, you've can, upgraded can, your can, music since can, then. Can we say Napster? Do you remember <laughs> Napster? Do you know what? It, okay, well, if you don't. It's so bad. Okay. So, so th this this is okay. this is a major disappointment. I I I if if you enjoy consuming audio. In any form, yeah. movie audio, game audio, music, podcasts, you cannot use the P20 until you've at least also purchased the Pixel dongle. Either the Pixel dongle or in if you my opinion- you want to step up, the I Razer dongle is it. definitely so better. The Razer dongle for the price point that it comes in and you can buy it on its own, I think it's a well, well worth investment for any of your devices. I'm not saying that, you know- that's the bare minimum. Yeah, and yeah. this is not a sponsor. We're not trying to sell the Pixel dongle, but what I'm trying to, uh, or the uh, the it's ten dollars, and we don't get yeah. affiliate links from Google. And, this and, is and, not and the reality advantageous it, for it, us. It's just so much for what it what it is, and it's easily just a big jump in performance in any device mm -hmm. you plug it into. So that, yeah, if you're right. For me, um, I did that right out of the box. Um, I, I I used to have the uh, the Razer phone, and I bought an extra dongle yeah. after I you know I sold that phone just because of how well that performed because I plugged it into my laptop and my laptop sounded better. Right. So, so but out of the box, I think the G7. Well, the G7 stomps on everything. Like it, yeah. the only thing that the G7 does not outright beat is a V30 or a V35. Yes. Or... E everything, every other phone on the market is a noticeable and quantifiable step below LG. But if you just rely on what's supplied from Huawei, there are $200 Motorola's that can outperform this phone. It's, it's and if something you would you like, to understand. if yeah. you'll pardon the, the shameless plug, I do have mm -hmm. on my Patreon um, in-depth audio reviews on both of these phones with charts and graphs and measurements the the and, by the way. and speaker tests and stuff like that. So this isn't just some waxing poetic of of an artistic opinion I, on no no I, i'm, this I'm is, with you i actually thought something was broken on my computer on my usb audio interface the output from this phone was so poor when i was capturing my test samples it, it's i had to run that test several times to determine oh no my computer's fine this phone is performing that poorly out of the box with what they supply. And, and it also brings up just the other point too, where I was disappointed LG didn't supply earbuds. I just, LG uh, used to partner with like B&O and Last AKG year, the, and... the G6 last year came with a pair of B&O headphones. Oh, they are I'm so like, nice. What is, and everybody is either, if they do include them, they don't include the best ones. And if they don't, or, you know, like Samsung includes at least the AKG tuned ones, which are reasonable. They're, they're Samsung earbuds, they're, yeah, they're, but they're, they're nice. Yeah, but at least it's, 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 it's getting, better than yeah. I was going to say, at least you're getting a pair of headphones <laughs> because the phone still has a headphone jack. Right. So here they do provide you with the USB-C headphones, but they're not, I wouldn't necessarily call them the best. They're also not a full. So they, here's, here's, here's my yeah. two, two quick points. And, and I, this is repeating myself from my audio review. So you're getting a little sneak peek here. But the link um, is in the description. Now. Check it out. It's great. Um, <laughs> two major problems. Um, one, I hate AirPod style design. Yeah. That's, I feel like it's, it. You, the drivers are actually pretty decent, but it's the isolation. That's the thing. If, if you forces you to listen, listen louder, to exactly, which defeats the purpose of having great audio. And and then it just does more wear and tear on your ears. Because I also have another interview on my channel with uh, one of the top audiologists in the country. Yep. And one of the things we talk about is Apple EarPod style headphones 
as we've seen the sort of market or rise. Even Pixel too, the, the Pixel Buds oh, Pixel that came Buds, out, they did the exact same thing. They they sit there, but they never isolate it, so you're forced to listen louder to block out noise in your exactly. environment. And yeah. so that I mean, again, it's a shameless plug. It's it's a great conversation with someone who's like literally at the top of her game mm -hmm. in studying this trend of hearing loss in young adults over the last ten years. You know, the rise of the iPod to the iPhone over the last 10 years, we've seen this substantial rise in hearing loss in young adults. And one of the correlating points we can point to is also this force feeding of audio 24-7, 365. So already I'm disappointed that you've got decent drivers in a very leaky housing for mm -hmm. your ear. The other thing that bothers me is the difference between the headphones and the dongle in that the headphones are a true USB audio device that will play yep. with your laptop. That's convenient, but it's supremely confusing from a consumer standpoint that you have two USB-C plugs. One will work with pretty much anything, anything. and, and one, the other is only gonna work with this phone, a Motorola and an HTC. It, like that to me sets this whole conversation back. Every time, it's not unique to Huawei. No, no, I was gonna say, but yeah, every time a manufacturer started this, uh, this entire trend. does this, it sets this whole conversation back where USB-C should rightfully be the successor to the 3.5 millimeter phono jack. If we're gonna get rid of the jack on our phones, USB-C is the absolute best contender for the next yep. consumer standard of audio. But you can't do that if one item in your box is proprietary and one item in your box is universal. No one outside of us techies are gonna bother to go, well, why does it not work on this computer? Why does it do this? Better Google it. No, they're gonna say F off. Yep. And then this is too hard to use. I'm gonna go get an iPhone. Exactly. It's it's a fr it's a frustrating point that it really should not have been. It's a simple thing that should have been like, okay, make them both universal or make them both proprietary. At least keep it consistent. Because then also, the I guarantee you, you would have gotten better audio performance out of a little mini 16-bit DAC built into an adapter than this pass-through off the Kirin. The Kirin is not doing a good job of driving audio. And so, Especially after Qualcomm stepped up. Yeah, no, no, definitely. So the Qualcomm, 830, the, 8, the 845 is definitely... It's, was the 835 was a huge improvement over the 820. It well, oh yeah, no, I, we're talking like leaps, but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to put so the 8 the 835 and the Kira 970 were kind of like the 2017 chipset yeah. of the year. Um, now we're almost at the end of eight, uh, 2018, and we're going to be seeing the Kira 980 uh, in I think the 980. Yeah, the well, 980. We're assuming uh, whichever, it's going to be called the 980. 980, 1020, whichever comes out. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some better improvement, especially with the, the seven nanometer uh, architecture that you're trying to go to now from what we have. Because overall, you could do, you can make it better, but you need to get out of the box and get something else to make it better. And I think if, if you're buying that much, if you're spending that much dough on a, on a piece of hardware, now I had the DAC at home. I didn't have to go buy it. That's something that you need to keep in mind. I, yeah, I, that, it, that, that's point to one right there. It, it, no, it, but it makes me sad because really, ultimately, it, it encourages sort of a, a purchase on Bluetooth because then you don't have to play those games. And well, actually, surprisingly enough, uh, when this was released, it did come with a, uh, I think, was it uh, the Bose QC35s for free? Oh, wow. <laughs> Built in into the uh, the whole okay. thing. There was a, it was a That's free great. offer at, at launch, the QC35, at least in Europe, since it wasn't in the US, uh, available in the US at that point. Mm -hmm. um, you did get a pair of QC35s. Uh, I don't think it's the one with the assistant, but at least it was a yeah. pretty decent. The QC35s are very nice. Yeah, they're great. Um, so you you did not face this issue out of the box because you got a great piece of cans and just a good device overall. Right. But So they, but they knew, I think they probably knew a little bit of that. It's still, I, I don't claim to be any great audiophile, but it's the convenience of something I don't have to charge. You know, it's, looking around your room, I wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like again. All the microphones in this room. Yeah, he I, doesn't, yeah, all the headphones. I, I, I don't, I mean, the thousands of dollars of mics right in there. I'm not an audiophile. No. Um, no, I'm really not. It's it's more, uh, you know, if I plug in studio monitors or if mm -hmm. I plug in like, you know, like mid-ranger headphones, like my Sennheiser 599s are not audiophile grade headphones. They're really sweet open ear cans that I can't replicate with Bluetooth. No, no, no. I can't, it, it, there, there, I can't. There is a there is a straight benefit to having it, and you're right. The the whereas the, and then I still can go to my blue. I have some great Bluetooth. Oh no, no, I, I don't disagree. I can still go to the G7. But we in have the, the same hardware. Way. We have the space. There really was no reason for it not to be there. So for that one, I would say you know you're right. But let's not. I know we've kind of <laughs> Juan and I has a, have a habit of uh, of 
If we talk we about something, long. it could go really long. This was intended to be a 10 minute conversation. You're gonna have a lot of editing to do. A lot of editing. <laughs> uh, but what I wanna, wanna bring it in before yes. I kind of close it on my side, um, the short answer for me, and I'll, I'll put in my two cents and, uh, and I'll kind of recap it with you guys is, I feel like they're both great devices in their own respective way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think putting them head to head uh, will basically bring out the pluses and minuses in both of them. You can't really say that one is a perfect device and the other one is done basically obviously a failure. They both will shine in their own respective way. Uh, for video, I really think the G7 is for me a, a winner in there, just from the controls as well as the functionality, what you get out of the out of the sensor. Um, just great quality pictures and uh, just overall capturing that moment, especially when you have a kid. I have an eight year old, and you know when I go to the beach and I want to walk right behind him, I don't want to worry about my shaky hand moving around because I'm fumbling on the sand. I want to make sure that my my video comes out right. And but on the other end, if I want to take pictures of my son at night or if I want to take pictures during uh, during the day and so on, I always. Uh, go and sorry about that little discussion there. Uh, I always try to go with the P20 Pro. So uh, for me, audio, I think it's always going to be kind of a toss up depending on how you listen. If you're Bluetooth and you're Bluetooth hardcore, doesn't it what doesn't really have, matter which yeah. one you go. If you have a pair of headphones and you really enjoy your head, your earphones or your ears and enjoying the audio, I think <laughs> if you like your ears. If you like your ears. If you don't, sorry, like I've been ears, using that since the V10. <laughs> like, uh, if you like I, your then ears, then I definitely would 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 push to and then say the G7 would, is is going to be the phone for you. That's my opinion. What do you, what, how so, would you? I mean, cause you're, you're going to have other conversations about other aspects of these. Yeah, phones, no, no, I, but, I'm still going to kind of do a proper kind of close but, out after this for, for, but ultimately I, I boil this, this conversation down in much the same way that we were talking about phones with the Lumia 1020. Mm -hmm. This, this P20 pro is a pretty decent smartphone built around an incredible camera sensor. Yeah. But that's its focus. So again, I, I want to be able to have those nuanced conversations where it's okay to go after a, a phone that has a focus and be that, you know, that's the daily driver for someone who really appreciates a specific focus on a device. I think the G7 is a more complete all around experience for a variety of different um, uses, situations, media consumption, media content creation, um, and just the fact that it is that little bit newer with the slightly more powerful chipset yeah. kind of it, plays into- We are into talking a, 2018 hardware too. I mean- 2018 this, hardware, yeah. right. Um, I mean, cause the, the Kirin 970 was that nice evolutionary step. It's 835 power plus AI core mm -hmm. capabilities. So it is better yep. than an 835. Oh, that's true. It does but have an NPU, which is something also that is different than some of the other devices we're looking at. But is it's it, not better than an 845 where the 845 is giving us some of that AI core capabilities. It's baked in, yeah. And a more powerful, more power efficient chipset at the same time. So we're, we're in sort of overlapping transition points between these different generations of phones. Like they're not one-to-one. -one. It's not like I can, if I compare an LG to a OnePlus 6, that's a much more that's linear more, Yeah, no, exactly. You're talking same chipset, you're talking same generation. You're right. And, and, and going after similar things at the similar time because of just the aesthetics of the smartphone market all kind of landing at the same time. But that really does bring me to that last point. There are so many just little quality of life things on the G7 that I think add up to the more complete, well-rounded experience and more people will find things to like on a G7 mm -hmm. where they might be compromised on the P20 Pro. I think yeah. the P20 Pro, even at its launch price, it deserves, it, it totally achieves what Huawei has set out to do. But I think that's a slightly more limited section demographic yeah. of consumers. And I think LG finally, <laughs> after all of these years, they, they from the G4 to now, landed on a current zeitgeist consumer all-rounder that doesn't sacrifice the things that we love about the V-series phones. And, and I and I really so. hope that this ends up being a little bit of a, a comeback story and starting to see more LG hardware because in the US, at least in the market, both these devices have some challenges as far as being able to get into the US market as right. far as just being used. Not to say that LG isn't available, it's just, it's hard to find it in a store. And uh, the P24, you'd have to import wherever you are. 
it's an importing kind of thing unless but you lived in Europe. But also, or in China. I mean, because the thing is, like, I know like only thirty percent of my viewers are in North America. I'm sure your numbers are probably similar it's to very, a, yeah. a much more worldwide audience. Uh, obviously, different regions, different markets are going to have exactly. access to these funds. Different, and they may to... even get a different version of the G7 too, depending because LG does have this that really uh, obnoxious yeah, habit, right? habit of basically tuning the phone. The G7 the was a little bit better. The G6 was terrible. You get a DAC. You get wireless. Oh yeah, charging. yeah, that's right. yeah get... they separated the, G, the, the <laughs> like, wireless. Why would like, you do that? Why would you do this? So, but anyway, far fewer shenanigans this generation this of generation, lg it's more consistent a little, and, a little bit more consistent yeah. and 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 for a lot of the smartphone conversations which we didn't get into we got more it's like so many things just hand in hand oh, like yeah. like ui both are terrible yeah they, they both have <laughs> the their, box both They're have both some, some challenges and for me <laughs> i installed nova launcher on both no, exactly. so to me, uh, me too. the ui uh, overall that's why we didn't really i didn't want to basically bring it into a, a conversation because that goes into personal taste right? right and you can do that on android on any device and that's really why um that's not part of the selling point to a phone for me because most phones now can handle a secondary launcher easily and with enough space to keep everything running smoothly. So to me, I think I really appreciate that we were able to do this challenge. Yeah. Uh, you know, as This was you, a fun showdown because th like- This I, was a good thing to be able to just- I was really it. sad that for as impressive the camera specs were on this that I hadn't had a chance to play with one closer to launch. I, like it, this, this felt like it was kind of a gap in my personal lineup. Um, and- the more I was using the G7, I was kind of surprised like how often I was picking up that phone. Like yeah. it was really putting down the V30 in a lot of places and picking up the G7. So being able to kind of compare and contrast like this was very informative for me. And it's just a lot more fun to kind of have a sort of like a, a debate partner. It, it is, it is. I, I want it because he talks so much about the G7. <laughs> it's not just that, I mean, it's not on camera, but I mean, it. he does, he does. And, and honestly, uh, as far as a travel phone, I can, I won't travel without that phone. To me, anytime I travel, anywhere, anywhere I'm going. He's to going event, on a trip in another week and I have to give the phone back. That's pretty so. much what I was trying to do. And uh, <laughs> before the person calling me ends up getting me on my uh, on my thing. But um, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap it up for you guys. I want to say thank you very much, Juan, for allowing me to have this challenge. No, pleasure on mine. And this is awesome. um, I am sad, but, you know, uh, I'll give this back to you and I'll take mine back. Um, and with that. You're going to answer that phone call. I, I'm going to answer uh, that phone call. He's going to catch you on his next video. Yeah. <laughs>